everybody. This is John again, and I'm back to do another fly pattern. And this is another one of the uh, European style flies that I'm tying for you. I believe it was uh, invented by a European, and it's called the plume tip. This uses uh, CDC for the wing and the thorax, and the original recipe calls for uh, heron hurl which in the U.S. we cannot use heron. Um, if you happen to pick one up on the side of the lake or something like that and use it for your own personal use, that's okay, but you cannot use it commercially. So I had to come up with a substitute, and what I've come up with is the secondary feather from the wing of a goose. And this is just a, a Canadian goose and you can see it's a fairly light color it's about the same color as the hair and what i'm going to do is i'm going to strip this right here i want to use the long section on that side of the feather um, just get that fluff off the other side and get it out of the way and i will show you how we're going to handle that once we get there first let's get started with the hook this is a TMCO 103BL. This hook is super razor sharp, and it's a very light wire hook, but it's extremely stout. This is a size 15, which uh, obviously falls between a 14 and a 16, and it is every bit as strong as a uh, TMCO 100 hook in either one of those sizes. You can see it's got a lot of movement to it, but it's got a ton of spring. It, I believe it's a different kind of steel. It's got a slightly different temper, and obviously because it's black, it has a different finish. The thread we're going to use is a Vivas 14 aught in light olive. I'm going to use this as the rib for the fly, so instead of starting it at the eye, I'm going to start it right back here about the hook point run it back to the back of the shank and I'm going to put that tag end into my material holder and leave it there. Now I'm just going to spiral forward with my thread to keep from building a lot of bulk until I get about just about the thickness of the hook wire from the eye and then drop back a turn or two. Now the wing on this like I said is CDC. This is natural mallard CDC, it is not dyed. I like the natural whenever I can use it for any fly. Uh, it just seems to uh, do what it's supposed to do a little bit better, and that is repel water. So I'm going to take these two feathers, and you can see they're pretty similar shaped, and that's what you want to shoot for. In shape and size, you want them very similar because it's going to make it easier to stack the ends, and I hope you can see those ends are almost completely evened up. I'm going to get that a little bit better. Let me see here. There we go. It's a little tricky. There we go. Once I get those evened up, I'm just going to grab them by the stem and then get, come back here and pinch the butt end and then just kind of slide my right thumb and forefinger forward and then pinch those feathers together and I'm going to want them to kind of face downward on the hook so I'm going to measure the length and then I'm going to reposition that so I've got a better grip on it and it's positioned the way I want it to be and these two don't seem to be cooperating like I'd like. Okay, in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them on my side of the hook with the curve facing towards the opposite side of the hook. And I'm going to let the thread torque help me out here. I'm going to make one loose wrap and then cinch it down. There we go. And then you can see that it just kind of walked that thread around. I want to get three thread wraps to lock that in place and then I'm going to lift that up make sure I'm not crowding the eye make one wrap up there to keep that from sliding 
forward anymore and then make a couple wraps back behind again. Now I'm just going to come in here, cut this at a pretty sharp angle, and that's going to keep us from having an abrupt solid step. I want to open the thread up by spinning it counterclockwise as you look down onto the bobbin. And what that's going to do is flatten the thread, and that's one of the things that this Beavis thread does really well, and that's flatten out. And that's going to help me gather all of those fibers from that CDC. And then we're going to create just a little bit of a taper. There we go. So now we don't have a sharp step. Now I'm just going to wind my thread back to where we started out and where we stopped wrapping the tag end of the thread to the hook shank. Excuse me, I got a little fiber there. I'm going to clip that off. There we go. Now I'm going to take my uh, goose secondary feather and I'm just going to take my bodkin and count one, two, three for this size 15 that works out uh, just right if you're going to do a smaller one you can do uh, two all right and then just pull those loose from the quill now this is going to be just enough length because this feather is a little bit shorter than one i've been using so i'm going to just Catch it in right there at the back, very gently. You don't want to pull on this too much because while you're wrapping it, it's fairly delicate. But once we get it done, this is, uh, for what it looks like, it's an exceptionally durable fly, partly because of the reinforcement that we're going to do on it. And I'm just going to wrap that forward to right up behind, not touching, but pretty close to the uh, CDC wing. Now I like to turn that sideways so I can get to everything a little bit better and then just wrap my three barbs around the shank. And once I get it on there and I'm past the uh, hook point I'm going to just put my finger on it, hold it in place, and put it in my hackle pliers. It's the short rotary hackle plier. And I really like this for this because it keeps it nice and flat. It doesn't compress the barbs down against each other. And you can get some good width when you're wrapping it onto the hook shank to create this abdomen. And you can see that's a nice fuzzy, even, very thinly tapered abdomen. And as I come around there towards the end, I'm just going to catch that with one thread wrap behind and then go in front and behind again. And that's all you need to lock that in there because of the fuzzy little barbules on there. We'll clip that off nice and close. Now, here's our rib, which is our tying thread tag. And I'm going to cut it on, on my vise. I've got a uh, material clip that's about three inches away from the back of the hook. And that's all I need right there. Now, I'm just going to take and dampen my fingertips and then spin that thread. And I need to hold it up here. I know I'm out of the frame spinning. But all I'm doing is spinning that between my thumb and forefinger on my right hand. And you can see that it makes that thread spin up really tight. Now I'm going to let go with my right hand and hold it. I'm pinching it with my left hand and get it into my hackle pliers. Now again, I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to counter wrap it. And that is going to allow us to catch each and every one of those wraps of those hackle barbs and just give them a little bit of reinforcement. And the yellow olive gives this just a little bit of a sheen and a very delicate segmentation. Now as I come around with that on my last wrap, I'm going to take my hackle pliers and go down and we're going to spin the hackle pliers twice around the main bobbin thread and make a wrap 
two wraps with the bobbin and then I'm going to spin it two more times around the main thread and then just make one more wrap. And what that's done is uh, it's locked that in and it will keep that counter wrap thread from walking around your thread wraps and coming undone. Now to build the collar, this is a, a uh, slightly tricky process and we're going to use the butts off of one of the CDC feathers that we trimmed. Now to do that, I'm just going to take this and grab all of the long ones in my left thumb and forefinger and then just trim that right off. Now you can see I've just got those ends of that CDC coming out from my fingers. I'm going to dampen my thumb and forefinger on my right hand and just press those fibers right onto my finger. Now I'm going to pull enough thread out that I can press those up against my thread and fold them over the thread and then I'm going to rock back and forth without relieving the pressure off of my thumb and forefinger and you can see what that did. And that is a real gnarly kind of a dubbing loop with a lot of appendages coming out and that's what we want. We want those appendages to uh, imitate the legs cracking out of the shuck on this emerging fly. And this fly works for calabatus, uh, BWOs, uh, midges, just about anything. You just change the size and the color of the thread because that gray imitates uh, just about any bug. Think of the way we fish in atoms as a searching fly. Now once I've got that wrapped on there, I want to make sure I've got it secure and I don't have any more CDC on my tying thread. I'm just going to fold that wing back, come over twice behind the hook eye, and then I'm going to use a uh, half hitch tool. Make a single half hitch. That just catches everything in there so I know it's not going to come undone. And then I like to use two triple half hitches on this if you want you can use your whip finisher it doesn't matter you just want to get that nice and secured and this thread locks down extremely well you can see I'm rocking it back and forth to make sure everything is cinched now I just want to cut that as close as I can and that is the fly known as the plume tip I have no idea who invented it I was asked to tie these up by uh, a uh, fellow who now lives in San Francisco who's originally from Ireland and this is a pattern that uh, he had known about before he got over here. I have used this in uh, rivers. It's not, as you can tell, a rough water fly, but it's a good spring creek or uh, for those areas of slow slicks where uh, fish will stack up and feed on emergers and even adults but this is a very good imitative fly and it does catch a lot of trout so tie a few of these things up get them in the water get them wet and see how they fish for you i'm going to be making a video uh, pretty quick on uh, floatants and i just want to say right here if you're going to use a floatant on this you need to make sure it is a cdc friendly floating uh, because some of the gels and paste just don't work they just gum them all up but we'll get into that later my favorite is the loon loxa l-o-c-h-s-a i think it works beautifully especially on this fly but any fly that uses marabou or cdc where you don't want to gum it up give these things a try and until next time peace love and fly fishing my friends